Welcome, Marge. And welcome to the program dedicated to uh, reestablishing constitutional government, first in Oregon and then in the United States. Um, today, my guest is uh, Aaron Auer, who is uh, a circuit riding preacher of modern day <laughs> circuit riding preacher. Uh, he founded Roar Ministry, and uh, one of the problems, you know, one of the reasons our Constitution isn't being upheld is because people really don't understand our heritage. Mm -hmm. And Aaron here, he founded Roar Ministry, reviving Oregon's amazing roots. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about your ministry. Aaron. Well, thank you, Michael, for the opportunity to be here and, and the uh, audience looking into these things together. Uh, I found myself at the state capitol back April 16, 2007, and I found there's a couple mighty monuments, living memorials, that are evidence of our roots that are rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ, one being the circuit riding preacher statue with this inscription, and I like to say it, commemorating the labors and achievements of the ministers of the gospel, who as circuit riders became the friends, counselors, and evangels to the pioneers on every American frontier. And I was shocked when I saw that. And he's looking into the perfect law of liberty, this man on a horse with Bible in hand looking into the perfect law of liberty. And that led me into, and I saw the Jason Lee statue also with Bible and petition in hand because he was the first missionary of Oregon because of what this man did right here. He hocus deacon. This man walked nearly 3,000 miles of the Ness Pierce tribe back in 1831, 32 to find the Book of Heaven because Creator had been given dreams and visions to many Native Americans about this book coming <laughs> to show how they can obtain the favor of Creator in this life and the life to come. So when they made known there at the doorstep of General Clark, the Book of Heaven, the Bible, that's when they sent Jason Lee, the first missionary. And he was thrust out here in 1834, which established the Oregon Mission, which was really the first orphanage of Oregon, take care of the children that were orphaned amongst some of the Indian tribes there. And out of that Oregon Mission became Willamette University the first and oldest university west of the Rocky Mountains. Jason Lee, the missionary, preaching statesman, is the founder of Oregon's education. And to go along with that, here is the uh, forming of the provisional government back in 1843 on May 2nd, the historic vote that was led up by the famous, uh, the first, who became the first sheriff of Oregon, you remember his, what his name was? We're going to think of his name <laughs> in a minute. And Joe Meek, Joe legendary Meek. Joe Meek. And he no. said, who's for the divide? Who's for the report of the committee? And 51 stood with him versus 50. So there was a total of 52 versus 50. The names of the men, the first patriots of Oregon, those mountain men and the missionaries <laughs> working together there at Shampooey, a monument. And it took place on May 2nd. 1843. And so when we say reviving Oregon's amazing roots, we're talking about the roots of the Lord with God's Word, the Indians call for the Book of Heaven that brought Jason Lee, the educational roots that are rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the forming of the provisional government, the governing of God with the men here established the great state of Oregon. And that's our heritage. And Roar Ministries in, in that uh, you know heartbeat here is what we're sharing all over the state. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we've gotten a long way away from there. Uh, you know, there was yes, an attempt uh, by Representative Dick Gilliam to remove Jason Lee's statute from the statute mm -hmm. hall in mm -hmm. Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. and failed, fortunately. Um, Praise the Lord. But a lot of the issues that we face today stem from our forgetting our heritage and our turning our back on our heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, today, uh, right now there's an initiative being mm -hmm. circulated 
which shouldn't even need to be circulated because it shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be an issue at all. That, you know, we want to stop the uh, taxpayer funding for abortion. Mm -hmm. um, over from 2002 to 2012, over 34,000 babies had been murdered by abortion and the state of Oregon has spent $16 million doing this. Mm -hmm. um, as a preacher, I assume you have a, taken a stand on this mm -hmm. issue as well? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I have. We've already been to the whole state back in 2009 when Oregon's birthday, 150 years, called the sesquicentennial. Yeah. Uh, I went county by county representing Jason Lee with a declaration we put together in the spirit of the Declaration of Independence. And we went to every county courthouse to defend and preserve, in the declaration we read it, to defend and preserve the sanctity of life, the life of the unborn, and the sanctity of biblical traditional marriage being held as honorable and all. And we read that in all 36 county courthouses in 2009. We call it the Line in the Sand Tour and we did it in 45 days. And we were there in uh, Vail, Oregon, Malheur County, we started June 2nd, and the judge was there of the county, and he heard us give presentation and preach and pray and even prophesy. And he said, before you boys leave town, because I was with my friend who represented Jedediah Strong Smith, the shouting Methodist that carried Bible and rifle in hand, and that's still a great way to pack, I say, my brother. And the judge invited us into his courtroom to share this with the commissioner, cool. with the local reporter and his staff, and that's how we started this tour. So we are very supportive and speaking up for the rights of the unborn. We have rights, unalienable rights, as citizens of the United States of America. And I would like to just read here from the Declaration of Independence. Again, as a reminder, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life. God is the author of life. The creator himself, that the natives sought for the book, the book, the book. What saith the book? What saith the Constitution? What saith the Scriptures? Well, here, and there's many in the book of God, the book of heaven. But let's look what Jeremiah here was was identified as a prophet, he says, verse 5, chapter 1 of Jeremiah, Behold, I formed thee in the belly before I formed thee. In the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What would happen if Jeremiah, the prophet of God, where he said, my heart, the word of God, his word is in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones because it's living and active. The word of God is spirit and life, Jesus said. It's spirit food. How can we not be strong without God's word? How can we not feed our spirits God's word that the natives sought for? that establish this nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. So we should first come to the Scripture. What saith the Scripture concerning life? He came to give life, he says, more abundantly. But it's the enemy, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Well, that's ripping the, the eternal beings and spirits out of mother's wombs. They don't have a voice, do they? No or the voice they have is crying, but we have to give voice to that voice as a right. There is rights of all men, but what about these eternal spirits? 
that are created and formed by God in the mother's womb. Yeah. Um, and it's also, you know, it's a physical baby in there. Um, yes. Oregon law, unfortunately, allows abortion throughout the pregnancy. The day she's having her baby, if she decides, uh, you know, she doesn't like the pain, she can ask the doctor to kill the baby and, mm -hmm. you know, the doctor can get away with doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but most abortions take place in the 8 to 12 week period. Mm -hmm. That's the vast majority of them. Mm -hmm. now, although there are some that are before that and some unfortunately after that. But the majority are 8 to 12 weeks. And I have a, a video here showing the development of the baby at the 8 to 12 week period, which okay. is when most babies are, are murdered in mm -hmm. the womb. Uh, so I'm going to take a few seconds to play that. And baby's mouth can even open to practice saying, ah, once the itch is gone. At 12 weeks, mom's coughing wakes the baby. Also, without being too specific, a close look will reveal that this baby's parents can stop thinking about girls' names. Also at 12 weeks, baby starts to smile. It's probably just coincidence that this is the same time that baby learns to kick, bend, twist, turn the head, make a fist, and punch. Okay, um, and as you can see by the, the video, you know, this is a, a human baby, you know, that is developing, and it is being, you know, being cut off, you know, mm -hmm. that living being, that spirit mm -hmm. is and Marion County was, uh, I guess they cut it off today, you know, when, they, when it became public, but they had been, uh, you know, British Columbia had been sending uh, fetuses, you know, aborted babies to Oregon, to Marion County, to burn in their medical waste. You know, that's what they, they consider mm -hmm. uh, the, the aborted babies, just waste. Just waste. And they were turning it into electricity. Now, mm -hmm. when it became public, they stopped it at least temporarily. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. but the fact that they had this attitude that it was okay to begin right. with, right. you know, kind of shows you where we are as a society. Well, it shows you if we don't reverence God's word, the Book of Heaven, you're going to become a lunatic in our thinking and our legislating. And if we don't know what the Constitution says that came out of the scripture because of those preachers preaching in the revolutionary days and era of the issues of the day to find the solutions you see can you imagine if you were ripped out of your mother's womb and did not have an opportunity to give voice and your choices with the lord and with man 
there would be a loss in Oregon and society and the United States of America because Michael Marsh has brought much blessing to humanity and to people. Thank you. Everyone that's on this earth has a right to serve God with a human body. If we remove that right by murder, as you said, slaughter, that is something that we're going to have to give an account for as individuals and as a state and as a nation. So a way to repent is to remove, one way to do that is to remove the public taxpayer funding of abortion in Oregon. Now I can say this, as a man, and I don't say this for any reason other than just to tell the truth. I've been responsible for abortions in that I've seeded into a woman and by the choice she made, and I never stopped it, there's eternal spirits that are in heaven right now because of my sin. And there's a lot of men out there that are responsible that you're hearing for this. And women. So the good news is that if you ask the Lord to forgive you, He'll forgive you, Michael. Yeah. And He won't hold it against you. And you know what? These eternal spirits that are in heaven right now because they're eternal spirits. Thank God for that. <laughs> and they will not hold it against you. So they're waiting for us to come and be with them throughout all eternity. The Lord can work it out for good somehow. But we must stop it. We must give our entire life and endeavor to unite to stop something that is so basic. The most innocent people on the earth are these eternal beings in the wombs of their mother. They're precious. I'm sure the governor of Oregon is glad his mother did not aboard him. Thankfully, thank the Lord that his mother and father chose to keep him. I'm thankful my mother and father kept chose to keep me. Yeah. And, and so we need to make sure that we're looking at these things from the, the, the truth and what saith the scripture, what saith the word of God, and what saith the uh, Constitution of the United States because we, we uh, through the Declaration of Independence there, the founding document, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These eternal spirits need to have the chance for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if we don't protect them, if we don't do everything we can through our prayers, through our action, through legislation, legislature and legislative action, through this initiative, the 2014 initiative, we need the signatures. Yeah. We need people to do your part. And you can change if, if you haven't made an effort to stop this. It, it can turn for good. The Lord is merciful. He loves you. He loves us. But we must do what's right. And God will honor that yes. for the sake of conscience. And the website is uh, Oregon2014.org. And you can download a petition to sign mm -hmm. a single sheet. But you should also contact them and ask them for the ability, you know, for a signature sheet gathering. Because we need people, you know, mm -hmm. even if you just get 10 signatures mm -hmm. beside yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we've got about 50,000. Uh, and we need a minimum of... Uh, about a hundred and some thousand, so we're about halfway where we need to be at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, uh, the Secretary of State does not want this bill to be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So they're, they're going to be going over it real closely and throwing out, and they throw out automatically on everybody, uh, some just mm -hmm. walking in the door, they throw out some of them. But they're going to be 
checking this one out real close even after that. Well, and everyone is going to have to give an account to the Lord. So even if people think they get away with it here now or in this life, there is an eternal judgment. And we need to make sure people know that. And, and we need the fear of the Lord to do what's right. You see, because there is the judge, the Lord himself. And the scripture says he's standing at the door. We're not going to be able to get away with it. Yeah, he's, he can't be bribed. <laughs> no, he can't be bribed. Justice and judgment, good judgment, righteous judgment is his foundation. And so we have a chance. There is an opportunity to make things right before God and before man. And so we're here today appealing. And I appeal as a minister of the gospel. I appeal to, the, to all Oregonians. But I, but I specifically am appealing as well to the ministers, the pastors, the preachers, when they say, oh, that's political, I can't get involved. Well, let me ask you this, is life political or is it spiritual and biblical? Is the Constitution political or is it uh, spiritual in nature? It came out of the pulpit. Abraham Lincoln, I just read today where he said, this, the Constitution must be studied and it must be preached from the pulpits. When they used to bring the Declaration in the churches and read on every 4th of July or that Sunday sermon there, they would read the Declaration of, of Independence in its entirety yeah. to the people, you see. So it is not a political, even though it's manifested that way, in elections, in law giving, of judge ruling, but according to the scripture, it's spiritual. It's life or death. We're talking about life and death. And the scripture says, choose this day life. Yeah. But he gives us the choice. We need to give these most innocent, precious, eternal beings the opportunity to choose themselves. And I'm here to pray as well, Michael, yeah. for people that have had abortions, both women and men, men that, again, were responsible for not stopping it or paying for it. And if you have not asked the Lord to forgive you, you can do it right now. And he'll cleanse you. And he'll wash you by his precious blood. That's what the scripture says. There's good news. There's hope <laughs> for all that have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I'm pouring out my heart here to give you an opportunity. The Lord's given you, the Lord's given our state an opportunity yeah. to put this on the ballot so that the citizens of Oregon can legally make a choice. And the blessing of God by your signature and by your gathering signatures and by your talking and preachers by you making it available, taking the leadership that you need to lead with the whole counsel of God to lead your people into an activity that is spiritual, not just political. And if you do that, there will be a blessing of the Lord that's added to help you, to help our great state, to love thy neighbor as thyself. The great commandment, to love thy neighbor as thyself. This is fulfillment to love the neighbors that are yet unborn, but they're eternal. Love them as thyself. Love thy neighbor as you would want to be treated. And I know the way you would want to be treated, that you were able to be birthed and born and thank God for it. Life, liberty, and that pursuit of happiness. And, you know, the Bill of Rights, uh, interestingly, it's the fifth one, which is about halfway in between, yeah. But what I consider maybe the linchpin of the Constitution. It says, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property mm -hmm. without due process of mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, babies are being deprived of life, liberty, and property well, <laughs> without yeah. due yeah. process of law. Right. Um, again, go on the web, 
internet to uh, Oregon2014.org and sign the signature and make arrangements to get at least one sheet of 10 so you can collect 10 signatures. And let's put this on the ballot mm -hmm. and give the people of Oregon a choice. Mm -hmm. Do we want to continue murdering these babies or do we want, and, and it's not going to stop abortion. And, but right now we're all responsible mm -hmm. because we're all paying for it. Mm -hmm. This is all this does is say, okay, we're not going to be paying for it. People, mm -hmm. they're making their own choices, mm -hmm. you know, and God himself, you know, like he recommended to Adam and Eve to stay away from the tree. Commanded him actually, <laughs> but he didn't put a fence yeah. around the tree. He, you know, he said, "Okay, you you bet." Gave him the free choice. Free gave will. him the choice. That's it. Yeah. And, and so we need God in our governing of ourselves first. You need to govern yourself. Yeah. Right. And then if we can govern ourselves with God's word, which we can, and when we do that, we can govern properly with the governor in society. And in our state and nation. One more time I want to read this scripture. Before I formed thee in the belly. Jeremiah 1.5. I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. How many people have been robbed from being a, a minister. Or a, a person to bless humanity. And they're not here. That's part of our problem as society. So Lord we ask you to forgive our state Forgive us, Lord, for this most wicked activity. We, we pray for the mercy of God, you're rich in mercy. And those that are hearing that have been involved in this slaughter uh, of the most innocent, may they call on you to forgive them, Lord. And you will cleanse them completely and they can have a clear conscience and that you would raise them up to help do their part to stop it. We command it to cease and desist in this state in the name of Jesus. Satan, we command you to cease and desist in your operations of stealing, killing, and destroying our most precious, valuable, the most wonderful thing you've made is these children in the womb. May they come forth, Lord, and we just speak blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank you for coming on the program. You're welcome, Michael. Glad to be here with you and... In the audience, God bless you again. Thank you. Thank you. Do the right thing.